Okay, there we go. Okay. Uh, so this is one area that you can create an invoice. And also we have a option to the top right here that you can also create a new invoice from here. Uh, when you create an estimate, okay, we can pull up an estimate for an example. All right, so it's important that when you're looking at an estimate, um, you actually will first have to have a signature, capture a signature before you're able to convert it to an invoice. Okay, so um, I'll try to find an estimate that has not been converted yet, or I'm sorry, that does not have a signature. And I will show you, let's see, view open. Okay, so if you're looking at your estimate, if you need to add more items, you can do so from here. And once you present this estimate to the customer, you do have the option to go to the right, which is this gear icon of that item. And if they decline that item, you would select decline and that will go into, excuse me one second. Okay, once you decline the item, that will go into um, the decline tab here. Um, and I actually just got this question the other day, is if ever you're trying to view all of your declined items in the past, we actually have a report for that, which I can pr quickly show you. Uh, so under your reports module, If you click into billing, you're going to see a declined items here. Okay, so I don't have any declined items for this filter, but you can always change your dates if you're looking for a larger date range. And then you'll see the details of all of the declined items here. All right, going back into the billing dashboard, um, let's go back to that estimate we were looking at. When you're ready to capture the client signature, you're gonna see this approve estimate option to the top. And if you have a touch tone device, you can have them draw it or you can just have them type their name. You'll click approve. and the signature is now on that estimate. So that if you were to print this out, you would see that. Um, I also do wanna point out that there is a valid until date as well, which you can default, um, and that'll be in your settings. But if ever you needed to change that, you would be able to edit this estimate before it was signed. Once it is signed, now you'll see this convert to invoice option. And it's always going to pull up this window here which is asking you if you want to create a SOAP for these records. Okay, so if you wanna associate it, let's say with a canine annual exam. And then typically I would always create the medical records. Um, it's very unlikely that you would select do not create medical records. Um, so that would be if you're not actually charging them and you have not done that to the patient. And then this is going to give you the option to create it to either an open invoice, which it's gonna default here to this open invoice, or we wanna create a new invoice. And now you see your invoice listed here. And this record will now be on PIP's patient profile. So we're looking into PIP and here is the gabapentin. <clears throat> as well as my canine annual exam that I selected. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of invoices and estimates. All right, this is going to be where you can collect payments. Um, you do not have to collect payments from the invoice, so this is another option. 
um, you will have to sign, you will have to type in the client's name here, type of payment, and then depending on who the client is, for example, if I type in my name, it's only gonna give you the option of what invoices I have open. Also take note that you can apply multiple payments. To, I'm sorry, you can apply one payment to multiple invoices. So actually I can show you how to do that. I'm gonna type in my name again. And we'll type in, let's say uh, $200 cash. And I wanna apply it to this invoice, this invoice and this one. Okay. <clears throat> now, this is important also that if they overpay, you can either, you'll either have this change if you're selecting cash, so that'll be automatic, or if you want to put a credit on their account. So I'll select credit and I can show you what this looks like on the client's profile. All right, so I'm going to click into my name here. Now, if ever you have issues with billing, um, if ever you charge someone or you're not sure why their account balance is, is not matching maybe um, uh, their, their statement, anything like that, I always recommend going to the billing module of the client's profile. Because you have all of your areas here that you can look into. For example, view payments. So this is really telling me of what the payment I just did was $200 paid in cash. And you can see it was applied to three different invoices. But if ever you're wondering how did that, this client get a credit, you'll see that it was created from this payment here. Also, it's gonna now be sitting under view credits and you'll see the 3488. This was automatic, okay, because it's showing that it, it was overpaid for an invoice. So the software actually typed in these notes for me, but um, if you need to edit that, you always can from here. You'll also see the convert to refund, okay? So um, as long as you're not using Card Connect, which is our, um, our integrated POS system, uh, this does not actually go back onto the card, but uh, you can convert to refund, okay, and then that would take away the credit from their account as if you're giving them the money back. Also, if ever you need to send out the billing statements to the client, you're going to have that account statement option from here that you can email or print. back into the billing dashboard. Okay, so these are all of your payments listed. And then we're gonna hover over to returns. Um, so in order to do a return, we're gonna first look at, again, let's view all um, unpaid invoices. All right, so let's do a return for Tanya Proffer, 5130. You're going to first type in the client's name of where you're going to be issuing that return to. Okay, now this is important that when you go to add in the items for that return, um, you have to type in an item that was actually given from that invoice. So that's why I'm actually going to go back to that invoice to show you um, what items were done on that invoice or what items were charged, I should say. Um, so there's a lot of vaccines in here, fecal test 40X. So we can just um, do a return, let's say, of the canine rabies one. And you'll see that that's populating. Oh, that's not, let's see. Hmm. 
let's do I'm not sure why it's pulling in the other invoice. Um, try here a different one. Okay, well, when you do a return, um, you, will you will be able to populate the specific items that she was charged for, obviously, and that's how you would create a return. Um, you cannot type in items in here that you did not actually sell to that client, if that makes sense. Also, it's always important to see the restock. Um, now, if you're just throwing away the item, then I would leave it at zero. If you're gonna actually be returning it into your inventory stock and want that accounted for back into the balance, then make sure to change that number. This option's just asking you if you want to deactivate the medical record. Um, I would keep the medical record in this case um, and, uh, and just make a note that it was returned, uh, but that's completely up to your discretion. And, um, and then you have the different reasons and better that you can make note of here. If you're issuing more than one return, instead of click, clicking save and close, I would use this shortcut here to click save and end new. So those items are now in a return window. However, before they're actually posted, they're still gonna be sitting here. So when you're actually ready to post that return, you're gonna click on this little green icon and the software is going to ask you if you want to issue this as a credit, um, credit I'm sorry, issue credit or refund or as a credit. Um, and so what that means is it'll go onto their, um, <clears throat> back onto their account or you can refund, sorry, say cash. Okay, so now that she's been given a $71.65 refund, you'll see that back onto her account. And I'm gonna go to billing and view refunds and you'll see that return was right um, coming from here. <clears throat> okay, so the ones that were not posted yet, they're gonna just stay as in progress. And then you'll see the ones that were actually posted and then you can see if they were given as a credit or how they were issued or as a refund. So this would mean it's on their account or the money was actually given back to them. All right, now for credits, another similar concept. With returns, you're gonna type in the client's name. the amount that you're going to give them a credit for. And that's pretty straightforward. So you have a credit now sitting on the account. Um, again, if I go back into my profile and I go to billing and I click view credits, you'll see that $20 credit is now sitting here. Um, now it's important to know that any open invoices uh, there's always going to show the um, the credit. So if I go to any open invoice, you'll see all of my credits listed, but they're not actually applied until you click on the applied button. So I will show you how that works. Uh, I'm going to click view invoices and we'll open one that's not paid yet. All right, so you can see my credits are now sitting here. All right, that does not mean that it's actually taken away from the amount that I owe yet until you click on this icon to the right. So you'll notice if I click apply credit, that 3488 has now been 
taken out of the account balance. And I'm also going to apply this credit as well. <clears throat> so then again, if you go back to your client's profile, you'll notice those credits are now gone. Um, and when you look at payments, it's going to show which invoice the credits were applied to. So you can always track that back. This option is just going to, if you made a mistake, it's just going to put the credit back onto the account. Um, I also want to point out that you do have in an invoice, just like you did with an estimate, you can have declined items as well. Okay, and so that's why when you run that report for declined items, it'll show all the decline in the estimate, but also in an invoice. Uh, the way you can decline an item would just be from that same tab to the right here, and you'll click on decline item. And select your reasoning. All right, so that is um, basically in a nutshell how you would handle the payments, how you can make sure a return is processed. Um, again, making sure that when you do a return, <clears throat> you're finding the items that were actually charged to that client. Okay, um, you can create credits and you can apply credits to, uh, again, um, multiple invoices. You can apply payments to multiple invoices. Um, if ever you have a credit, let's say on another person's account, I've had this question a few times. Um, if you have a credit on someone else's account and you would like to apply that credit to a different client, you can do that. However, what you'll need to do is go into the invoice and actually change the name on that invoice. So let's say I'm going to go back to... Okay, so these credits I'm going to put back on. And if ever you need to, let's say I'm going to go to another invoice that's open. I'm going to click on edit invoice. I'll change my name here. Um, and I'm sorry, I should have explained this as well. So you'll see this error pop up. Um, in order for you to be able to pay, uh, or another client to be able to pay for um, another patient that's not associated, you do have to create the relationship first. So I actually have to go into patient rover, and I'll show you how to do this. We're going to create a relationship and we'll just say um, previously owned by and I'll type in my name. Okay, relationship saved. Now, going into edit the invoice, changing the name. I'm not letting me do that. Hmm. Okay. Having two technical difficulties today. Okay. Um, I will have to get back to that one. Let's see. Okay, um, feel free to ask any questions after the webinar. Um, if you have questions about that, I can get back to you guys on that um, with an email um, just to confirm. I'm not sure why that is not working at that moment, but um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to um, comment in the chat window or if there's anything else in the billing module that you'd like me to review, I'm happy to do so.
<clears throat> All right, well, I don't have any questions um, that are coming out. So um, if anyone has any suggestions, even for next week, if there's something that you would like me to review, uh, feel free to send out an email um, or submit a ticket to our help desk. Um, just so all of you are aware, our help desk is going to be at the top right here. Make sure that you are registered as a user so that you can submit tickets through here. And um, I did have a question come through, so let's get to that first. Okay, so checking a client in under a bundle, starting the invoice, and then they get in the room and they want to do an estimate. I see. So the way to um, change your, you would first have to change the workflow of when you're checking in a client. Um, there is an option to start with an estimate instead. Um, and you can change that default in your settings under configurations, okay, for when you're checking in. So instead of clicking new invoice, I would always select new estimate because you can always move from new invoice to an estimate. However, you can't move from an estimate, I'm sorry, um, you, can't, you can't move from um, an estimate to an invoice to an estimate, so um, you have to start with an estimate first, and I can show you how to do that. All right, so I believe our annual canine exam has a bundle and a medical note associated with this, so I'm gonna just type in canine exam. I'm gonna type in my name. Okay. Next. Save. All right, now when you're getting ready to check in, this is going to be a default that you probably have set to new invoice. Instead, I would always change that protocol to start with a new estimate instead. Does that help answer your question? Okay. Yeah, if anyone else has any other questions, um, even if they're not regarding billing, feel free to ask me. I'm happy to answer that as we are, um, as we are here. All right, well then I'm gonna close out this office hours. Um, thank you all for, for joining. Um, sorry, this was a quick one, but, um, but yeah, if anyone has suggestions for next week, anything you'd like me to review, I'm always taking suggestions um, and uh, we'll be doing this again next week. So I'll send out a mass email on Monday for what we will be uh, discussing next week. And tomorrow's webinar training is at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1 p.m. Eastern. That will be reviewing our administration um, side and that'll go over the settings module, the inventory, and, um, and any of your configurations of getting that set up as well. Um, all right, so thanks again for joining and have a great rest of your day.